Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital, and today I want to go over a subject that I've gone over in a past video, FM synthesis. In the previous video, I talked about how what we generally consider to be FM synthesis is actually phase modulation, and true FM synthesis is something different. Um, so I'm going to leave a link for that video in the description, but let's look at a little bit of what I'm talking about here. So here, if we have two oscillators, and I take the output of this oscillator and stick it into the pitch input here, and I start playing with the depth. You know, there's you notice there's a pitch increase, and the the kind of timbre we're getting is not so pleasant. So this is good for maybe making some weird sound effects, but it's not so good for making musical instruments. Um, however, if I plug into the phase input. That's really what we generally think of when we're talking about FM synthesis. But in that other video, people were asking, is there a way to do true FM or linear FM in the grid? Now at the time, I couldn't think of a way, but now I actually have found a way. It's a little bit involved. We're gonna go through this, but um, it's, um, we'll have to ask the question, is it worth it? But it can be done, so let's do it. <laughs> so, First off, we need a way to modulate a linear scaled uh, frequency input. And none of the oscillators have that. So what we're gonna need to do, instead of using an oscillator, is we're gonna use the LFO. Now, when we uh, look at the scaling here on the LFO, we can change this to kilohertz, and then we can turn the, the kilohertz number down here to zero. And that way, the clock isn't going to actually advance the waveform at all. And the next thing we want to do is plug into the pitch input here or the, the frequency input as it is now, because since we're using this kilohertz scale, it's not actually going to be pitch anymore. It's going to be frequency. And we can do zero crossing, meaning that we can go all the way down to zero hertz and then go into negative uh, frequency, which will actually be a phase flip version of the positive corresponding number. And that's exactly what we want for FM. So... Even right now, if I start to, I'm gonna use the sine wave here. If I play something, we don't hear anything, but as soon as I add a little bit of modulation here, we're getting true FM. Um, and let's look at a display of what's going on here. And we can see actually what's happening with the waveform. Oh, let's make this bipolar. So this is quite similar to what we would expect with phase modulation, but there are some differences. But first, let me point out a bit of a problem with this particular iteration of, of frequency modulation. If I go down into low registers here, the lower I go, the more drastic the modulation tends to be. You see all of these kind of folded back waveforms here. Let me turn to mono so I can always see the waveform. So you see that this is zigzagging like how many times, like eight times or something like this. Whereas if I use a much higher frequency, it's just going, not even doing one fold over really, or kind of like one. So this makes for an inconsistent kind of uh, timbre across the keyboard range, which is generally not what we want. You might want that in some cases, but what we would like to have is a consistent waveform for every key along the whole pitch spectrum, right? And that can be done, but we're gonna have to do some math. So let's, let's dig in here and see what we have to do to make this work. So first we're gonna take a, a pitch output here, put this over here. And ultimately we're gonna use this pitch to modulate a variable that we can use to increase or decrease the amount of modulation. So let's also bring in a level value here. And I'm gonna put that there. Let's put it, let's say, yeah, let's put it here. For, and then I'm gonna put in a modulator like this. And this modulator is gonna modulate this input here. So we're gonna turn this up to like, whatever, let's do 24. 
doesn't have to be exact, but so now if I um, plug this up into this, I can change the amount of modulation as you can see there. Let me zoom out a little bit. I can change the amount of modulation from this level. And I use a level here because level has kind of an exponential curve to it. And that's more conducive for modulating something like this. Um, it has nothing to do with the, the pitch not being exponential anymore. It's it's a, just how we're raising and lowering the amount of modulation. So now what we want to do is make it so that when it's a different pitch, it will increase the amount of modulation when it's a higher pitch and decrease it when it's a lower pitch. So if you understand how this pitch thing works, let's use one of these displays here. I'll put it right here and hook it up. So when I hit a, a C3, which is this one, C3, I get zero out of this pitch. If I'm doing C4, I'm gonna get 0.1, C5 is gonna be 0.2, and then below C3, C2 is going to be negative one and negative two. So what we wanna do first is convert this into whole numbers, and that can be done pretty easily. We just need to multiply the output, so get math, get multiply. Now we can just bring in a constant of 10, raise this up to 10, and then plug that in. And now the output is going to be negative two, one, negative one, zero, one, two. So, so far so good. So now what we wanna do is we wanna be able to multiply the output of this um, by some, some sort of multiplier that is gonna be generated over here. And doing that is a bit tricky to make it work right. But let's go ahead and get our multiplier here. Now, right now we're entering in zero, so this is gonna have no effect on anything right now. And let's just go ahead and I'm gonna break from this for a second and fix another problem over here. And that problem is that if there is no modulation, we get no sound. That's because we're basically sitting at a zero hertz um, oscillator, right? So we never want that to happen. So we want to have a clock running that follows pitch. And to do that, what we can do is simply give our, get ourselves a phase and plug that into the phase modulation here, turn it up all the way, make sure it's all the way up because if it isn't, it's gonna give you some distortion. So now, even when there's no modulation, we still get the normal pitch and it's acting just like an oscillator. So that's figured out. Now, how are we going to change the amount of modulation corresponding to pitch? Well, we're gonna to need to go into math here and use this exponent guy here. And what this is gonna allow us to do is to create kind of a logarithm of, of uh, to the base two. So if I um, get myself another constant and a base two logarithm is the type of, of, of curve that pitch has. So we're gonna match that same change in pitch with a change in modulation. So let's change this to two and make it the base. And then we want the output here, the whole number output of the pitch to be the exponent. Now let's look at the output of that. So if I am on C3, here, I'm gonna get an output of one, which means that the modulation won't change at all. If I am at C4, I'm gonna get an output of two, which means it doubles whatever modulation I, I'm giving it. And then at C, um, where are we at? C5, four or five, uh, we're getting quadruple and so on. And then if we go below C4, uh, I'm gonna C3, we get one half, basically, we have the amount of modulation. So that's exactly what we're looking for. So we can take the output of this and multiply it by our modulation amount. And now, regardless of what note I play, we're getting the same waveform. So it's very uniform. And this is the complete setup of a very functional true FM or linear FM modulation setup. Um, it's a bit involved, granted, and I'm not sure that it's any better than 
what you can do with phase modulation, but it is different. So let's do a little bit of comparison between FM here and, um, and PM. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw in a switch here and add a button so I can switch between two sources. And then I'm gonna get a regular oscillator or I'm gonna use the phase oscillator here plug that into the phase, turn that up, and I probably am going to need to um, maybe add a bit of a, a level so I can get the same amount of, of uh, depth in there. So let's use a one of these guys. Oops, didn't quite make it. There we go. So I can pump up the volume when I want to. So let's offset it by like 12 dB or something. That should be good. And then we'll get a good range here. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm going to take the output of this, plug it into here, and now we can hear the difference. And you know what I'm also going to do here? Let me get rid of the uh, bottom here so we can see more. I'm going to make another um, one of these. Click and drag so that we can see uh, the output of this separately. So already we see that there's a difference, but that's because I'm I'm kind of modulating at different levels. So let's see if we can closely match and let me get, actually, I'm gonna change this to sign so we can really match them up nicely. So that looks, eh, it's like two and three. Now, now let's try like that. Is that right? It's close, whatever, something like that. Okay, no, it isn't, it's not quite there. Yeah, I don't think we can do the exact same one. Anyway, I'm going to do something close like that. So that's pretty close. Let's change the, the color of this one to purple. So purple is phase modulation and red is frequency modulation. So let's listen to these. So very, very, very similar. And, um, you know, let's kind of sweep through here with fre frequency modulation. And then phase modulation. So there is somewhat of a difference in character there. Um, but where it really gets extremely different, and let's see, I was gonna try to match these up for their baselines as much as possible. Yeah, something like that, whatever. Um, when you start to change the waveform of the modulator, the thing that you're feeding into these guys, they behave very differently. So if I start adding a bunch of high harmonics to this modulator, uh, like by changing the format, for instance, in the phase modulation, I'm gonna get a lot more high frequency content than I am gonna get in frequency modulation. You can hear that, you can see it here, but let's switch. So they really start to depart from each other when you start to get more complex input. The frequency modulation is gonna stay fairly mellowed regardless of what you do here. Um, like with frequency, I mean with phase modulation, this gets really, a lot of high end in there. With frequency, it stays pretty mild regardless of, of what you do. And if I increase the frequency here, I get a very different character. Listen to that frequency modulation there. And this isn't even turned up all the way. It's, you get so much more kind of grit or, or just kind of ring and, and metallic nature out of uh, phase modulation. But of course you can just decrease the amount of, of phase modulation and get something more mellow. Um, so I think in general, phase modulation is the more easy to use, more flexible. Another problem with frequency modulation, as you probably start to hear, if there is more energy in the positive than in the negative, then you're going to get pitch inconsistencies and all kinds of weird artifacts. Mm -hmm. 
which can be interesting when you're making some fun noises and it is a good way to make some interesting noises, but it's not going to be kind of a, a pitched sort of instrument thing. Whereas with phase modulation, it doesn't matter what you plug in pretty much, it's still going to sound fairly musical. It sounds cool though. In any case, that's it guys. That's how you do frequency, linear frequency modulation in the grid. It's fun to play with, I think, and it can be useful. Um, but if you don't want to go through the trouble, I think you can rest easy that phase modulation pretty much covers everything you need. It's a lot easier to use. It's, it's a, a lot more forgiving uh, when you're modulating uh, with any kind of carrier. I'm sorry, with any kind of modulator. And you can generally get a very similar sound with phase modulation or traditional FM as you can uh, with uh, frequency true linear FM. So anyway, try that out, play with it, see if you like it. In the comments, you can tell me whether you think um, linear FM is worth anything or not. Um, any case, guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.